morning, Chad. I hope the week has treated you well on this uh, Friday the 19th as we close it out. Oh, the weekend is coming. No longer have to put up with shit at school and at work. Just one more day until you can relax and kick back and enjoy yourselves. Oh, boy. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about on this stream. Lots of crazy shit going on this week. You know, initially I was going to uh, dedicate it to Slazo, I think his name is. Uh, but other stuff came up. Other stuff that I find a lot more interesting. So I might be delaying that. Delaying that while I focus on something that I find uh, more fascinating. We're going to be talking about Libra. Oh, boy. Who doesn't like talking about Facebook? We'll get into that. A couple other things. Apparently thoughts are being purged on Instagram. That's uh, catching everyone's attention. Now, what is her name? Uh, Delphine Dolphin? I don't fucking know. The chick that sold horny, <laughs> horny, desperate needs her bathwater. They paid 30 bucks a pop to have fluid that was near her asshole in a bottle they can keep next to their bed. It's it very touching, really. <laughs> God bless capitalism. God bless the United States of America. If I can't buy a whore's bathwater, I don't want to live in the country. <laughs> That's how I measure my freedom. By how much ass-tainted H2O I can purchase in a bottled format. Put up that. Got a shill. Got a shill. Got to get that money. Buy my hats. <laughs> it's not as good as it's not as good as the Thoughts bathwater, but it'll probably last longer, because you can't really drink a hat while masturbating, can you? Oh yeah, she got thrown off Instagram. There, I caught you up on the whole story. I I don't know exactly what the reasoning for her banning was. Millions of followers, but I'm pretty sure she's everywhere else. I mean, it's not like she's disappeared from the internet. Still up on Patreon, making eight hundred million dollars a month. Still up on Facebook and Twitter and all the other social media platforms. I guess Instagram got jealous. They wanted some of that exclusive bathwater. Maybe they wanted her to piss in a jar, and she just wasn't willing to. Who knows? Who knows? You can never keep track of these things. The internet moves so quickly, it's hard to keep track of it all. Speaking of moving quickly, let me, let me just grab something here. I have a very nice, relaxed morning, because I'm going to get stressed out and spurg out when we talk about Libra. And the Zuckerberg. Oh, our little Zuckerberg. Up to the nefarious shit that he loves to do. I don't trust that son of a bitch. Not one fucking moment do I trust him. I thought I'd... I, you know, I, I've been getting so into this crypto stuff, I, I'm, I'm never going to invest in it. But I like following it now, because it entertains the fuck out of me. It's so weird, I can't really pinpoint it. But I'd like to give you your your crypto in the morning. Your crypto morning minute. Or or a, a breakfast with bitcoins. I don't know. Come up with something catchy. Come up with some catchy idea that you can call it. But let's take a look. Oh, look at that. Bitcoin is still... It's still stable. Bounce back from that, that low of 9,300 sitting at 10,500. Oh, oh, I know you're celebrating, Neats. I can hear you. Dreaming of those Lambos that are never going to come. I'd just like to remind you that while you may have staved off desolation and poverty and having to move back in with mom and dad, you may be Bitcoin rich at the moment, but we all know the one irrefutable proof, or the one irrefutable truth, excuse me, that exists when it comes to cryptocurrency. The bears always win. And that shit's going to crash hard. Maybe not today. Maybe not in a decade. But it's going to happen. The bears play the long game. That shit's coming down on your heads like a filthy temple full of heathens being struck down by by a bear-like god's wrath. That's your... There, there you go. See? Look at that. Crypto in the morning took me less than a minute. I'm getting very fast at that. Oh, but it's a nice segue. It's a nice segue into talking about Libra and all the crazy shit that was going on with that. You know, if I hadn't been uh, really paying attention to the, the crypto shit for laughs, I wouldn't have ended up watching a fucking two-hour stream of an obese Russian man talking about uh, smart contracts and oracles. I had no idea what the fuck any of this chain link shit was until I watched him give a two-hour live stream, essentially, and explain it. I get an idea now of what what he's trying to do. I have no idea if it's feasible or honest, but at least I have a clue as to what uh, our boy is doing. 
But right on the heels of that, I saw people posting a link to uh, to a committee meeting in the House of people that were going to be talking about Libra. Facebook wants to start its own coin. Now, they're not calling it a cryptocurrency. It's not exactly like a cryptocurrency. They want to be middleware, middlemen. They want to be the sort of people that are going to help your transactions. Money changers. They want you to convert into their currency and do international trade with it. Now, it's not going to have a really a speculative market. I think it's uh, they're, they're trying to, what is it, stablecoin? Is that the term I'm looking for, where it's dollar to dollar backed? And there'd just be a nominal fee tacked on. I love how they try to sell that to the public. Nominal fee, don't worry about it. Our currency, nominal fee. Nothing that you have to concern yourself with. It's not like we're going to be making an insane amount of money. It's not like we're a all-powerful platform that has billions of users who now wants to essentially create company script <laughs> and control a, a, a massive amount of currency. Control how that currency is distributed, who trades on that platform. Get information about business dealings because we're part of the Libra Association. Because we're going to have that wallet integrated into your Facebook account. So they sent their flimflam man up to Washington to sell everybody bullshit. And that's essentially what it was. Straight up bullshit. That this isn't setting off alarm bells in your fucking head when it comes to a corporation the size of Facebook talking about creating its own goddamn currency. I don't know what to tell you. That's a nightmare scenario. You know, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm blown away by the fact that companies like Facebook and Google and Alphabet and all these motherfuckers, these billion-dollar international corporations, can do the shit that they do. And yet Bill Gates got fucked in the ass by Janet Reno. A million-dollar-a-day fine. Because he wanted to put his fucking web browser and package it together with his operating system. And they said that was unfair competition. Too much power in the hands of one corporation. Bill, you need to get the fuck out of here with that shit. And yet Facebook and Google and all these other companies, they can produce hardware and software and search engines. And now we're talking about wallets and currency. And everybody seems to be like, well, whatever. It's a new era. It's a new age. People are uh, interacting and, uh, you know, uh, engaging in commerce in ways that they never did before. So we should all be okay with that. We should be okay with a company like Facebook putting forward a proposition like this because it's not going to, it's not going to do anything bad. What, what bad things could happen? Absolutely fucking ridiculous. I don't trust Zuckerberg. All right. <laughs> this guy, let's just, just to give you an idea. This guy is so detached. He bought a property in, I think it was a, a Hawaiian island. Uh, him and his wife bought this property. His neighbors fucking hated him. Just fucking hated him. Hated her, hated him, hated what they did to the goddamn neighborhood. Because he's not a human being. He doesn't breathe oxygen like you and I. He doesn't drink water like we do. He's an automaton. Seeking to, to gain as much... Um, fucking currency as he can as much control as he can this is disastrous and watching this subcommittee meeting where they're discussing this with a Facebook representative somebody who's there to represent I guess not just Facebook but the Libra Association the association that's in charge of it the association that's going to be determining all sorts of things from the amount of money involved the people involved the players conversion rates all of that these are going to be the power brokers of this great new modern era. And you fucking watch this. And some of these motherfuckers have no clue what they're doing or what they're talking about. They're so detached from reality they don't care. I kid you not, one of these assholes actually did a five-minute spiel where he said, Oh, we got more important things to talk about. We shouldn't be wasting our time with this. The private market's great. Let Facebook do what Facebook wants to do. I don't see any danger with letting this happen. I don't see any reason to be cautious about letting somebody like this have this amount of power. If you let a genie like this out of the bottle, you will never get it back in. And it won't just be Facebook. It'll be a multitude of companies. Because these fuckers like to compete with one another, and they like to complicate shit, and they like to have control, and they like to have power. And look at streaming platforms. When it comes to getting content from Hollywood be it a television show or a movie. You've got uh, a few that popped up and became popular, like a Netflix or a Hulu, and now all these other companies want to compete. They don't want to go in it together. 
They all want to compete. So now if you want to watch a fucking show that you like, you've got to subscribe to 82 different goddamn services to stream something. And the nightmare dystopian future that I foresee, outside of the flagrant abuses that these pricks are going to put into place, is going to be having to convert my Facebook Libra into my Google Goggle, or whatever the fuck they're going to call their currency, <laughs> into uh, WordPress widgets and 19 other currencies because I want to buy something. Because I want to go out and make a fucking purchase. Then I've got to go through some transaction change. And all of these companies, nominal fees. So that five bucks I put in for that nominal fee gets hit by 18 different corporations. And by the time it gets to Amazon, so I can order my extra-sized dragon dildo, I've got 18 fucking cents left. Nominal fee. What a load of shit. The fact this asshole could go into there and say that with a straight face is remarkable to me. Like he's just trying to slip it under the radar. Like nobody's going to notice or understand what the risk is in something like that. You're talking about millions to tens of millions, maybe even hundreds of millions of transactions a day with that amount of users. And if your nominal fee is spread out amongst all those transactions, not just the input, but the output as well, the nominal fee to take the money and convert it into the Libra system, and then take the money in the Libra system and convert it out into U.S. dollars or whatever the currency is. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's going to be such a money-making scheme, Facebook won't give a shit about ad revenue. They'll be making a fucking killing off of this. You have these these representatives talking to this man, talking to the representative from Facebook, from the Libra Association, asking him all sorts of questions, getting no answers, as he gives them just indirect, long explanations to run the clock, because he knows if he can go for over five minutes, he doesn't have to explain himself very well. Doesn't really have to give great detail as to what their true plans are. But he did slip up on occasion. And on occasion, he let slip that, well, maybe we'll get to the point where we start doing loans. Maybe we'll get to the point where we start acting as a bank. <laughs> what is going... What the fuck? You know, the clown world meme isn't a meme. We, You know, my fucking son is a daughter. <laughs> okay? The Little Mermaid is black. I need to buy Facebook Monopoly money to buy something on Amazon. I don't understand when this world became so upside down. I don't understand when people became so fucking crazy that they'd look at a corporation this size and even consider letting them do this. Company script is a real fucking thing. They've done this before, and it ends badly. When you let a corporation use its own money so you can use purchase goods and services through them, they abuse it every single time. Go look at miners. Go look at people that worked in factories and had to deal with that shit back in the day. Where you fucking clock in, you get your paycheck, but it's not in real money. It's in company money. And then you pay your rent to the company because they own the fucking apartment complex. And then you buy your groceries at the company grocery store. It's a brilliant way to fuck you out of your actual hourly wage. Because you're not really making $10 an hour at that point. Because you're not passing that currency on to other businesses outside of the company you work for. They fuck with the margins, and they screw you through rent, they screw you through groceries, they screw you through services and goods. And if you don't think that Facebook will expand on where it wants to go with this, if you buy their bullshit about just wanting to be a middleman, just to help that, tra oh my god, you know, they sold it as this, I love this. Oh, the third, people in the third world aren't covered by banks. That's that's what they told the uh, representatives. Listen, we're trying to do some goodwill. We're humanitarians here at Facebook. All right, uh, yeah, sure. A lizard person slash robot hybrid runs our company. But Mark Zuckerberg aside, we're humanitarians. And there are a lot of third worlders out there that don't have access to a bank account. <laughs> okay. So the third worlders that don't have access to a bank account they have access to a fucking smartphone. They have access to a computer. You're going to give them a Bitcoin wallet. Um, well, explain this to me, genius. If the third worlder doesn't have a fucking bank account and the third worlder wants to run a business and make purchases and receive money, how do they convert it out? They need to use a bank at some point. So they're not really unbanked people, are they? 
if they're using a bank to take your bullshit Monopoly money and translate it into fucking South African clamshells or whatever bullshit currency they use over there, they have to go to some money changer, don't they? Oh, but watch it, watching these people, this this one guy, I swear to God. Oh, no, 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 Facebook's good, guys. Facebook's good. You trust them. Oh, God, I'm getting so sleepy over here. Oh, God, it is a, I'm really tired today. Let's, let's all take a nap. Let Facebook do what Facebook wants to do. Now, one of the more interesting aspects of this was the fact that it wasn't split down partisan lines. You would expect that you're going to get different answers or approaches from a Democrat versus a Republican. But it didn't really fall down party lines. Yes, the Democrats and Republicans that opposed it had different reasons for doing so. But people kind of got a gut feeling. A lot of them seemed to start to get a gut feeling that they were making a deal with Satan. That if they let Facebook do this, it was a real bad fucking idea on their part. Uh, so I'll show you some highlights from this. And we're just, we're going to talk about it a little bit because it's amazing to me that they would even attempt to do this. And when you look at the people that are in partnership with them, you start to understand why this is really, really, really fucking dangerous. Uh, so let me let me get rid of uh, our boy Zucky here. Oh boy, yeah, Mr. Zuck. Okay, yeah, you sure like that water. Drinking it like a real human being, you are. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, things are getting a little slow on my end. We might get an F. Started talking about banking, and now everything's slowing down. Oh, shit. This is a risk, chat. Have I gone too far? Am I going to learn a terrible lesson today? All right. Luckily, I watched this in real time. Fuck me. Six hours of this shit. These assholes spoke for six hours about this. And that guy, he must be getting paid and just his weight in gold. Because he was able to dodge every question. Well, the majority of them. He did slip up a few times. So we'll take a look. Because uh, I clipped out what I thought were the relevant portions. Uh, mainly when he was asked... Well, we'll get to it. I don't, I don't want to jump ahead too far here. All right. Yeah, uh, Mr. Hazana here. Uh, this fucking guy. <laughs> you ever... It, it reminded me of like a high school student that didn't do his fucking homework when it was this guy's turn to talk because uh, he went right to Wikipedia. He actually said to the guy... I went to Wikipedia and looked up the definition of fiat currency. You're on the fucking... You're, what are you doing? How did you get this position on a committee if you have to go to Wikipedia to look up the definition of fiat fucking currency, Hazana? What are you, smoking... <laughs> are you drinking petrol from a can? All right, this is the, this is the first uh, clip that I think is uh, fairly good here. Let's, let's bring it up. Uh, this representative asked what I thought was a very straightforward question, something that should be one of the first concerns that comes to mind when it comes to Facebook running their own fucking currency. This $20 bill can be used by every single person um, uh, that, that possesses it. With regard to your network, um, can Milo Yiannopoulos or Louis Farrakhan use um, Libra? Congressman, and I, was, and I bring that up because, you know, both those two individuals have been banned from Facebook. Uh, Congressman, um, uh, first, I, I want to say that... Uh, no, simple question. Come, this, you, you, no, but it, I, you, give me... We, gotta, I, we only have five minutes. You've got to answer a question. So, right off the bat, can they use the currency? Right? I, that seems like a very reasonable request to get that kind of information. Are these people that you've banned from using your social network, are they going to be able to use your currency? Now, somebody else follows that up later on with what I think is even more on point. And the answer, the answer is what you would fucking expect. Uh, it would be from this representative here. Do you expect um, to um, have the Libra Association... Um, vote to exclude companies like Chick-fil-A or anybody else that might have um, social views that you disagree with? Uh, Congressman, uh, this is actually not going to be uh, my decision or Facebook's decision. It's going to have to be a decision that is going to be taken by the council of members of the Libra Association and the Libra Association itself. Yeah, do you notice how that wasn't a no? Oh, the Libra Association is going to be the one to decide. 
this guy went into uh <laughs> he's asked straight up are, are you going to target people for their social views or their political ideologies are you going to allow them to do business through this libra functionality through this libra currency through this digital wallet are you going to let them do business a follow-up to the Yiannopoulos and Farrakhan question. You know, what happens when you give a company that uh, is trying to virtue signal, when you give a company that's got a slanted ideology or a political bias, uh, controls over a currency, and how that affects a person? So are you going to let them fairly use it? Or are you going to interfere? Are you going to say, you can't buy these donuts, you can't uh, uh, use this service, you can't uh, get a hotel room or rent a car or whatever? Because we don't like what you said in regards to who you voted for. We don't like your stance on gay marriage. We don't like your stance on abortion. No Libra currency for you. Even more shocking, and I wish somebody would have followed up with this, what happens if I have a Libra wallet and I convert hundreds or thousands of dollars into it, and then you decide you don't like my social viewpoint or you don't like my political ideology? Because that money's held by them. So where's that money being held before it's transferred out or uh, used for a purchase? Probably in a fucking account accruing interest so is this some way for them to, uh, to not just I, it reminds me of what happened with the proud boys where one of their uh leadership i don't know what you want to call it but one of their higher ups had his bank account yanked from him and they yanked the bank account the fucking bank did this yanked the bank account because they didn't like his politics and they decided they weren't going to allow him to bank through them now banks rarely do shit like that and I know that a company like Facebook or a company like Google would be way more trigger happy about implementing that kind of a stance, that kind of a policy, when it comes to dealing with wrong thing. When you have a platform that has billions of people and you integrate a currency system into it like they're proposing, and you make it integral and necessary to use a currency system like that to do trade and purchases online, because these companies will glad hand with one another until the cows come home. When you let them do that, you put people at risk of being put outside of the system. When you have all these companies that are venturing out to do new businesses, like Amazon and their grocery stores, what the fuck happens if Amazon decides they want to use Libra to make purchases in their grocery stores? They take over all over the country, and now you're banned from using Libra. I mean, you think that's outrageous, or you think that's far-fetched, but they're setting the table for it. They're setting the plates down. They're getting everybody ready for the, the dinner party. <laughs> and then they're going to throw you out on your ass with an empty stomach. So who are these companies that are a part of this Libra Association? Surely, surely these, these people must be, um, you know, unbiased. It's like 82 companies. But I'm not even interested in the majority of the social networks or the online services. I'm interested in the founding members that are part of the payment processors. So who exactly is a part of that? Because these are the people that are going to be making the decision. Remember what he said. We're going to leave it up to the Libra Association. So who the fuck are the Libra Association? Oh, there's some familiar faces. Founding members. This initial group of organizations will work together to finalize the Libra Association's charter and will become the association's founding members upon its completion. MasterCard, PayPal, PayU, Stripe, and Visa. Well, four of those should all step out and uh, jump right to your attention. MasterCard, Visa, PayPal, and Stripe. BitChute got fucked over by these guys. Patreon's been fucked over by these guys. Numerous creators have been fucked over by these guys. It's people within these corporations that have decided certain entities and businesses aren't going to be allowed to profit or use services. They're the ones that are sending out let or letters and emails and notices saying, we don't like your content. We don't like your politics. We don't like your social stances. You don't get to make money. You don't get to use our financial services. They strong arm little guys. I know a lot of people think Patreon is the most lip shit thing that ever existed on earth. But believe me, even Patreon gets a pressure applied to them by massive corporations like Visa and MasterCard and the others, telling them who's allowed on and who isn't allowed on. They've removed people because they were told by Visa and MasterCard and others, you need to remove them. And these are the guys that are going to be setting the policy for how Libra operates. These are the people that Facebook is assuring the representatives and the American people are going to be um, neutral and unbiased enough to put policies and practices in place that won't uh, 
handicap other people when it comes to being able to trade, buy, or sell on the internet. It's insane. And I notice a lot of these, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of curious where the major banks are because it almost feels like they're trying to, um, you know, edge into banking without being in banking. They want to create the currency system. They want to have these payment processes be the financial pillar of it. And they want to just kind of sidestep the banks. I mean, where, where, why is it just people talking about it? Why is it just the people that tuned into this, this Senate sub, or I'm sorry, this representative subcommittee had maybe 3,000 people watching. I wouldn't have fucking watched it because I wouldn't even have known that it was going on. Nobody knows that it's going on. So all you have waiting to stand up to corporations of this size, billion, multi, multi, multi billion dollar international corporations working with the largest social media conglomerates, all working together to try to line their pockets and fuck over the populace. The only ones standing up against that and asking questions, good or bad, are these representatives who nobody's watching because nobody knows it's going on. Nobody knows they maybe should be paying attention to it. That is fucking terrifying. You know, you had one or two that just, you, uh, they, you could almost tell they're bought and paid for. You could just tell that they were getting uh, campaign contributions from a vector that's a part of this. One of these companies was sucking their dick with a money wallet. And the others, for whatever reason, did something or at least said something. And you had people... <laughs> You had a lot of different representatives basically telling them outright, we don't trust you. you. We have no reason to trust you. You can't even keep people's data private. You're not secure. Why the fuck should we trust you with money? Why should we trust you to be unbiased? Why should we give you this kind of power? And I don't, I don't know how it's going to go. I really don't. I don't know if Facebook's going to be able to pull this off, but if they do, we are. F that's. I, I don't know where you go from there. It's bad enough with the way that Google and the other companies go after certain lines of thought when it comes to politics or social views or whatever. You know, uh, they ban you from a platform. They ban you from hosting your own your own website, using your own servers, using your own services, using your own payment processors. But now you're going to let them get into money. They can have a real world impact on you offline, not just online, offline. If they create a marketplace like this, where they can politically decide who can compete and who can't compete. That gives them power over dictating what uh, what businesses, what sectors of businesses do well. If they make it a hub of trade, if they make it a hub of purchases, they, they're the ones with the keys to the kingdom. This council of people, this council of 82 companies, gets to decide who's going to be a success and who isn't. And if you think they're going to let some small motherfucker in, if you think that they're going to let some company that has a belief that goes against theirs or who dares to speak out against the power they wield into that system, into that closed-off ecosystem, you're out of your fucking mind. They will never let them in. They will do everything they can to kick them out. This shit should absolutely fucking terrify you. And, it, you know, I, I Facebook's the first big one, I guess, to really have talked about doing something like this. But I don't doubt that they are going to be the only ones that do. They're not unique in their line of thought. Companies want to make fucking money. I mean, that's, that's you know, bullet point number one. But for some reason, a lot of these social media networks, a lot of these uh, massive online corporations have gotten into the habit of wanting to teach the world to believe what they believe. Fucking with search results. Fucking with artificial intelligence doing whatever they have to do by hook or by crook to make people line up with their viewpoints. I do not want these fucks in business. I do not want these fuckers in currency. That is a massively bad idea. Horrendously bad idea. You know, I may not know a ton about cryptocurrency. I've mostly just been paying attention a little bit about it uh, just for laughs. But I would rather have a thousand exit scams exist than to let one corporation like this have this kind of power. It's insanity. It's pure fucking insanity. Why are we allowing these companies to become modern day robber barons? 
why are we letting them become like the railroad tycoons of the past where they just control fucking everything you know this lawyer had the balls to tell one of the reps i, I think it was uh <laughs> it was the really obnoxious democratic chick the one that cried at a fence where no people were on the other side he told her he'd be fine being paid in libra Think of the level of brainwashing that asshole's already under to even suggest something like that. I would be fine with my company paying me in a fake digital currency controlled by lib shits in California. And when she actually did bring up, and she was the only one, company script in its history, he didn't even know what it was. Now, I can't imagine a man that educated in a suit that expensive doesn't know what it is. But if he really is that stupid, holy shit, is he in for a shock. I'd be fine being paid by Facebook and Libra. Fuck you, no you wouldn't. You want real money. You don't have to be stuck in their system to use your fucking cash. What a nightmare. Digital fucking currency controlled by Facebook. We're all going to be living the GameStop lifestyle. You know how they pay their employees? With fucking GameStop fun bucks. Oh, we're not going to give you a, a check to put into your bank account. We're going to give you some uh, bullshit uh, EBT-like credit card <laughs> that, that's accepted at one or two local gas stations, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, a fucking Papa John's and GameStop. That's your paycheck, asshole. Have fun. That's the closest we've really come to company script in the modern era. Nobody really cares because they think of GameStop as a company that hires children to work there on their off hours during high school. I, I don't know. I feel like I've taken a crazy pill. I feel like I've just, I've walked off a cliff into some weird fucked up reality. And people are just fine with it. They're fine with it. They just don't see the issue with it. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, from Loop M, uh, Rip, this is America, Rip. Uh, very true. Uh, it's a Lino boosting Bitcoin for the moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I can't talk too much shit about uh, online money when it comes to my Chinese lemons. I suppose. I don't know how that fucking hustle works, but it is what it is. Oh, we got a few here. Uh, Coile, or, uh, Coile, oh, God. Coile Dante. Ever been to a university town? Uh, company towns are alive and well. The new industry just happens to be scamming 20-year-olds. Well, that would fi or fall in line with what I said about GameStop. From Rodson. I know this is way off topic, but I think it's up your alley. It's a video where an old boomer lady reads her Jesus gay sex fanfic. Well, I yeah, we'll probably take a look at that then. Revelation 13, 17. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Yeah, well, that is a reality we're going into. And, you know, I, <laughs> I wouldn't really have thought Zuckerberg to be the Antichrist, but... He doesn't really appear to be very human-like, does he? Kind of reptilian. Maybe he's a dragon under there. Maybe if you, <laughs> maybe if you'd had him take his shirt off, there's six 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 tattooed on his fucking chest. We're gonna never know. Old Zucky and his digital bullshit fun bucks. I'm just so sick of these fucks and their companies buying up everything and getting into every industry and getting into every avenue of service and wanting to control it all and just tightening that fucking leash where they just won't let people talk like they want to talk, do what they want to do, express themselves in the way they want to express themselves. And now they want to control your money. That is the worst decision that we, that we can't let that happen. Now, you're the government representatives. I know that you've got a bunch of bullshit laws and regulations that shouldn't even exist. You love to fuck over small business. Surely somewhere in the tomes and tomes of bullshit that you've cobbled together to bilk people out of money over the last fucking century, you've got something you can hit these assholes with to prevent them from doing this. I refuse to believe that they can't stop it somehow. <laughs> that there's not something they have control of, they can say, no, we're not going to let it go through. Oh, what is this? Oh, uh, yeah, Facebook, I, I, I like this. They're already trying to message this. Remarkably, they're trying to message it already. Uh, let's see, there we go. 
Facebook is backpedaling from its ambitious vision of Libra. And yes, I'm reading this story on Ars Technica. Remember, Ars Technica, the number one name in news when it comes to child molesting. Uh, they were the ones with the reporter that uh, liked to talk a lot of shit about incels and neats and anime lovers on the internet. Turns out he fucked kids. Uh-oh. Hopefully this one's not molesting anybody. But Ars Technica is reporting that Facebook is backpedaling from its ambitious vision of Libra. Under pressure from regulators, Facebook is rethinking its design. Oh, are you? That's a load of shit. No, what they're rethinking is, how can we get our foot in the door? They're not rethinking their design. They know what their design is, and they know what they want their end game to be. They want to find a way to make representatives in the American public who are fat and stupid, you know, disconnect enough and not pay enough attention just to get that foot in the door. And then once they've established themselves as an economic global powerhouse, then they start implementing their actual design for what they want to do. Just kill it now. Don't let this go through. I don't know. Chad, maybe I, you know, I've ranted here. I've been ranting a little bit about this. You tell me. Maybe this is just, uh, maybe I just don't get it. Maybe I just don't understand what a brilliant idea it is letting a corporation like Facebook have this kind of control. You tell me. Am I wrong? Should we be letting these assholes have this kind of power? Because I don't see it ending well for anybody. I don't see it being the sort of thing we want to fucking happen. I've got to let you catch up now. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing no's. Well, uh, thankfully, at least, I'm not completely in the minority here. I've got something from Gertie D. What the hell currency is the Ninja Jet? I don't fucking know. I don't... Their currency conversion, I don't understand it. Okay. Um, I, I'm trying to... From what I, <laughs> I, I... I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I don't understand how this system works. I don't, un I don't understand how Linos work. I know that uh, venture capitalists from China came in and met with the, I believe they were Turkish founders of the website, and they gave them a massive amount of money, tens of millions of dollars. And they said, we want to get the infrastructure working well. We want to get the back end working well. We want to get that UI nailed down. We want to be a real serious competitor in this space. We're going to give you a fuck ton of money to get shit up to, you know, up to speed, to make it look good, to make it run good. And, um... We'll, we'll implement this currency system. You know, it's their version of bits, essentially. And we'll work out the details later on, on how we can make a real good profit off of that. But right now, we just want to build. So I don't know what the end vision for, for Lino Points is. I, I don't know what... I don't understand how it works. You know, what would have been interesting... Uh, you know, and I'm sure they're doing this because they want to control the currency themselves. They want to be Facebook. <laughs> in a way, I suppose. Uh, but it would have been interesting if they just built in um, cryptocurrency. Where it's, I, I don't know, where you can just donate directly through the site in whatever form you want to. Because who does it? <laughs> who doesn't want what? What was BitConnect? What was their thing? Who doesn't want to get paid in that? I can't even remember the name of it. I just remember the one guy screaming like Howard Dean uh, <laughs> during during that one live television broadcast. I'm sorry, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, JB Behemoth, uh, Libra, the in-game currency for real life? Yeah. Just don't let them do it. Just honest to God, I'm telling you, it's a disastrous decision. You can't give them that kind of power and that control over that amount of money and that control over that amount of business and that amount of people. It is a fucking awful idea. Uh, it's, it's more data. It's more data, too, to sell because now they're directly going to know the kind of shit you want to buy. All that dirty, kinky stuff you want to buy, all the embarrassing shit you want to buy, now they have a more accurate profile of who you are to sell to marketers, to advertisers, to governments, to whoever the fuck they want to give it to. It's just another layer of stripping away any anonymity, privacy, or protection you have as a consumer. So they can make even more money. It's double dipping. Not only are we going to take nominal fees from your currency exchange and use of our service to trade, buy, and sell... We're going to use the data we get from what you bought and sold and give that to marketers bundled with your name, your age, your location, your race, your religion, your political views, all of that, to give them the perfect picture of who you are and how to market to you. 
What a fucking nightmare. Just nightmarish. That's the world that's the world we're sitting in. That's the beautiful old US of A. Just let it happen, right? I have no faith in the government when it comes to this shit. I don't think anybody's paying enough attention to it when it comes to the government. I think they're gonna sneak it by and it's gonna get implemented in a fucking a year or two years, and then it'll become this big fucking thing, and it's going to just be disastrous. I mean, their sales pitch is, we facilitate uh, buying and selling quickly. We we appeal to people that are unbanked. Uh, we're global. Uh, you know, we, we provide security and assurance, and it's back one-to-one, and oh my God, isn't this great? Listen to all these benefits. It's headed up by major payment processors and major corporations that all have their own slants and viewpoints. And I would not want these fucking people, this cabal, this <clears throat> little oligarchy of technocrats, to have that kind of fucking control on the internet. God damn. You know, and speaking of Zuckerberg, let me put his little precious pictures up here. A little cherub angel. Speaking of Mark, uh, he was in a news story recently. Not just him, but uh, Elon Musk as well. Uh, related to Epstein, our egg d- <laughs> egg-shaped dick pedophile. Apparently, reporters now are having a lot of fun talking to anybody and everybody that ever associated with Epstein. And that list would include Elon Musk, who went to a party and apparently introduced Mark Zuckerberg to Epstein. <laughs> and, now, and now both uh, Musk and Zuckerberg are running for the hills, terrified of being connected to it. Uh, you know, Epstein, I've noticed a lot of people say it's not going to go anywhere. The Epstein thing's not going to go anywhere, Jim. Well, it's already gotten to a pretty decent spot already. 50 women in total now have come forward with allegations. I'm sure a lot of that's gold-digging bullshit, but I bet you there's enough sprinkled in there to make it interesting. They've denied his bail. He was going to put up everything he owned for collateral not to go to jail before his trial. Fuck you, Epstein. You're going to sit in jail before the trial. No bail. Bail's denied. Now everybody's talking about who's associated with it. About Epstein's connections to the Clinton Foundation. Old Slick Willie's out there shitting bricks, telling everybody he only made five stops on that plane when the flight logs say 23. Trump's saying, no, I threw him out of Mar-a-Lago. Uh, I don't like this man. Zuckerberg and Musk are running for the hills. <laughs> Alan Dershowitz, the Harvard professor that represented him and a friend of Epstein's, has been telling people that uh, he never saw any young women, even though every other person that's ever dealt with this guy has said, tons of young women. Young girls everywhere. But Dershowitz is saying, never saw it. I never saw it. That man is a saint. And then telling people that the the only massage I got was from a 50-year-old Russian woman named Olga. And I left my underwear on. Bullshit, Mr. Dershowitz. I don't believe you. The mysterious 50-year-old Russian woman named Olga was the only, the only customer she ever had for Mr. Epstein was you? Boy, that's real specific, isn't it? When, when he's got fucking uh, barely out of their preteens girls dancing and gyrating around on his plane called the fucking Lolita Express. But no, you got the massage from a 50-year-old Russian woman named Olga. Yeah, yeah, honk, honk, buddy. Real, real believable. God. Yeah, I, I've got... I'm going to say it outright. You know, I will admit, Kevin Spacey surprised me. They let him go. They've dropped the charges. Because, uh, I don't know, he told him he was gay. I thought that would go somewhere. Um, I know the charge... Oh, well, let me, let me rephrase that. They let him go because the witness who was going to testify, one of the complainants, uh, when he was asked to come and testify at the grand jury and give information during a deposition, repeatedly invoked the Fifth Amendment. Now, people can figure out why does he keep doing that. Then when they asked for him to turn over his phone that allegedly have conversations between him and Kevin Spacey, his mother had deleted certain ones and then denied she had done that. This made the prosecutors and the defense attorneys start to get a little uneasy. They thought something weird was going on. Well, this kid refused to answer anything, kept saying, I plead the fifth, I plead the fifth, I plead the fifth. Then they found social media postings of him basically sitting in Spacey's lap asking him to grab his dick. Then they found more information that he lied to Spacey about being a certain age when he wasn't that age. 
So that case was dropped. But I'm still curious about the one where he had the 16-year-old boy show up in his apartment. <clears throat> uh, the Broadway actor. Because from what I understand, that's a different person entirely. So I don't know if he's out of the woods completely. But in regards to that, he's been let go. So yes, the Casey or the Spacey thing did surprise me. But Epstein has so much shit on him. Remember, he is already convicted. Whether or not you think the plea deal was bullshit, he is a registered sex offender, and he's already been charged and found guilty of this shit. So I don't think they're going to give him a slap on the wrist. Acosta got thrown out. I have no doubt Trump brought him into the office and said, you're going to fucking resign today to get him the hell out of there because that is a hot potato nobody wants to touch. And there's no prosecutor stupid enough in this world to give him another goddamn plea deal after the debacle the last one was. So I'm absolutely certain that our uh, egg-shaped uh, aficionado, Mr. Epstein, is going gonna, gonna to face some big boy prison time. And there's no way a rich, spoiled, pampered son of a bitch who went from being a billionaire flying around the world in his private jets going to his child-fucking islands is going to suddenly be okay with the notion of being stuck in a 5x5 five five cell with Jerome. All right, he's not going to do that. So I absolutely believe he's going to roll over on people. I absolutely believe he's going to start naming names and organizations and things that went on. A lot of the people in finance and banking and investment and all that shit who've been commenting on these stories publicly and talking to reporters have all said the same fucking thing. And it's weird how it all lines up. None of them know how he made his money. Everybody's confused about that. And a lot of them are speculating that he just straight up blackmailed people with child sex. So when you have this many people in finance all saying the same thing, it makes me think it's an open secret. Which means this trial is going to be a fucking shit show. And I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it broadcast on national television. And I'm looking forward to him pointing out angrily at the prosecutor and saying, Bill Clinton! Bill Clinton did it! And then having a barbell fall through the roof and break his fucking neck. But at least he'll get those words out. <laughs> so uh, the swamp will be drained. So that's that's my hope going forward with uh, our dear beloved Eggman. God. What a weird fucking... It's been a weird month. Facebook's going to try to become... Uh, its own digital bank. You've got a billionaire. Oh, but he, yeah, not a billionaire. Only half a million. Or I'm sorry, uh, a half a billion dollars in assets all accumulated. So even lied about that. I mean, what's the point of lying at that point? If you've got $500 million, why lie and say you have a billion? You have $500 million. I don't... <laughs> is it really that fierce of a competition among the top of the top to see who's got the bigger dick when it comes to money? After a certain point, it must be so absurd. Who cares? You know, who gives a shit? Just call it a day. Walk away. I want to see pictures of inside this mansion. I'm looking forward to that. Of his sex dolls that were tied up to the fucking wall. And all the other crazy, weird, creepy shit that all the police and investigators have been uh, anonymously telling reporters about and saying, yeah, there's some fucked up shit in there. There's some, there's some weird shit going on in Epstein's fucking room. <laughs> we don't know what's up. Okay. Oh, I got my Libra rant out. I feel better. It's nice to vent a little bit. It's nice to vent a little bit when it comes to, uh, to scary things. And believe me, that Libra shit is scary. Uh, let's see, what should we do here? Okay. We'll just do a little break right now. When we come back, we're going to talk about a, a lie. <laughs> I think you're going to like this. A conspiracy, a secret conspiracy amongst librarians across the country to make your children gay. I think you'll like it. <laughs> Maybe you're unaware of the secret order of gay librarians and what they've been doing to your children. So we'll cover that. Because uh, <laughs> how could you not? How could you not cover that? Uh, we'll cover that when we come back. Uh, go grab a drink, take a piss, do what you got to do. I will be back in uh, five. Let us listen to a classic.
You know, I could, uh, I could probably go for sniffing a little bit of petrol right about now, now with all the crazy shit that's going on, and uh, not just Libra, of course, not just Epstein and the bizarre shit that he gets up to. I'm talking about the super secret conspiracy of librarians across the country trying to make your kids suck dick. Apparently, that's a thing. Uh, let me let me just pull it all up. There's a, a few things we're going to be looking over here. I'm going to start you off with what I found. <laughs> just ah uh, okay uh, I'll show you I'll show you exactly how I went through this and then show you something odd that I found on how it was all interconnected so I'm just gonna put this up uh, one second here for this morning's business meeting we I'm gonna just put this up and uh, well I'll walk you through it and you can tell me what you think for this morning's business me all right uh, let me pull it up here there we go all right, this is from the St. County, uh, St. Mary's County government. They're having a bit of an argument. See, something happened in their library, and they're very upset about it. And the librarian is talking to the county commissioners and the mayor and everybody else. They had a uh, LGBTQ barbecue meeting. <laughs> well, you know, we should, oh, we'll take a look at the clip, too. I'll show, <laughs> show you what happened. One man's out there fighting for the truth, and he got arrested for it. They had this giant get-together to celebrate homosexuality and transsexuality and uh, did it through the library by renting a room and then held a get-together for children in the community. Now, uh, it didn't go as expected. Uh, one citizen had a bit of an issue with it, and he decided to storm it. <laughs> he ran around in circles. He ran around. There's 70 people in this room talking about gay stuff with kids, and he runs in there going sonic fast, supersonic fast, and run circles around them screaming, don't let the men in dresses fool you kids, they're not real women. 
and the police had to come in and arrest them. Apparently that was a that was a bridge too far for the police in the local system. Hauled his ass out of there. Well, local government hears that this happened and uh, they're a little pissed off. They're like, hey, library, you've got to knock this shit out. You need to stop doing this because uh, you're making us look like assholes on a national scale and you're costing us fucking money. And to have those cops show up and arrest them, to have them provide security for this library event uh, for these children, uh, cost us as a community roughly $3,000. So this is what the the local government, this is the conclusion they came to. We're going to take that money from you. Fuck your books. Fuck your books. We're taking that $3,000 and we're giving it to the police department because they had to arrest a man that told children not to trust the men in dresses. And that's the gist of this meeting. Uh, I'm not going to make you actually listen to a a local commissioner uh, commission meeting of three and a half hours long. That's ludicrous. But I just wanted you to see where this starts on our little journey of exploration. <laughs> okay. Um, now, St. Mary's County. Actually, let me make sure I've got this. Let me make sure I've got this uh, queued up properly. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. The Baina. That's, that is where I wanted to go. Oh, shit. Hopefully I didn't just cut off what I... Okay, no, good. I didn't. All right. Uh, I lost my activity feed. Great. Um, okay. There we are. So this was the local news covering this. And they mentioned something that... Com- it's a little surprising. So we'll... We'll, <laughs> we'll see if you pick up on it. And then I'll show you how this ties into other things. And I think you'll be surprised. Uh, this is uh, the Baynet.com article talking about them having to pay the cost of the Drag Queen Story Hour. Maybe that sounds familiar to you. Drag Queen Story Hour. Yes, this is in fact the same library that was covered by Tucker Carlson like two years ago. This is the one that keeps making national news. And when they're talking in this article about you know some of the different things that were going on, making them pay money, uh, making them reimburse the police force for the ridiculous shit that's going on. Let me make, let me make fi- uh, sure I find it here. It's buried in this article, but it is, I, I trust me, it is in this article. Uh, here we go. It's right in here. Uh, this is what caught my attention. Listen to this shit. Another interesting point that was brought up by Commissioner Eric Colvin was regarding a post made on the American Library Association's website by St. Mary's County Librarian Tess Goldwasser two years ago. The content of her post suggested ways for libraries to sneakily fit LGBT stuff into current children's programming while acting as a secret librarian advocate operative. (laughs) So their librarian is using a national service of librarians and putting forward a proposal to sneak in LGBT material into children's programming as a secret librarian advocate operative. (laughs) What? This woman is outright openly admitting, and when they, you know, when the library uh, itself responded to the commissioner, said, yeah, that is weird. That is weird that our librarian (laughs) would be talking about going deep cover and making kids gay. A secret cabal? (laughs) How ridiculous is that? She wants it. I'm just, I'm stunned. I'm speechless. And again, to put this into context, two years ago, what was going on? Oh, let me make sure I, oh God, hopefully I didn't, um, yeah, here we go. I believe this is, I believe this is a clip uh, we're we're looking for. Uh, This one's talking about, you know, happening in Houston, but I'll give you an idea. Again, these people, uh, this librarian, Tess Goldwater, has this uh, political agenda. She's using her position as a librarian to influence it. Has been doing it for two years with the help of the American Librarian Association to, to get gay people and trans... Oh, I'm sorry, transsexuals uh, to come into libraries and talk to kids and uh, just all sorts of weird shit. They bring up a lot of other really weird shit that they were trying to introduce in the library. Sex books uh, for children, sex demonstrations for children... Really weird shit. But it all ties back into a story like this. What happens when these people are setting this up? Well, they don't vet anything. And 
So you get, well, this essentially. We get out of Texas in something called Drag Queen Story Time. It's a real thing. The Houston Public Library System is apologizing tonight after a mishap with their regularly scheduled drag, drag queen story time. It's exactly what it sounds like. Drag queens, men who dress up as parodies of women, reading books to young children. How did that go wrong? Well, one of the drag queens employed by the Houston Library Systems turned out to be a sex offender. Not an alleged sex offender, a registered one. A man who sexually assaulted a background check before putting him around children. Why bother? It's not like the point of this was to help children in the first place. The program will continue, of course, in Houston and many other places. But the much bigger question is, why are we putting up with drag queen story times in public libraries in the first place? Let's say, you know, that's an uh, that's an actually a good question, Tucker. Maybe you should talk to Tess Goldwater, the what did she call herself? Secret librarian advocate operative. Well, that's a fancy title. That's a fancy glow in the dark title for uh, Miss Tess Goldwasser to give herself when it comes to the wonderful world of story time. <laughs> Oh, let me see if I can, uh, I'll try, let me, let me pull up the video of the guy's actual arrest. They do have a little clip of it. <laughs> this dude, he runs in circles screaming, don't trust the men in dresses. It's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> he was really fucking committed to this. Okay, um, uh, I'll just, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at the article. Here we go. Oh, let me make sure that's in there. Man arrested Sunday at Lexington Park Library, Drag Queen Story Hour. And this is, again, this relates to the commission we just saw. Uh, due to an elevated level of interest for a private event held at the Lexington Park Library on Sunday, June 23rd, additional personnel from St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office were present. And our boy here, Ashley Kyle Morgan, 42, of Leonardtown, attempted to register so he could attend the event. They told him no, and they also told him he was uh, prohibited from attending, and if he showed up, the police would arrest him. But our hero, Ashley Kyle Morgan, probably after seeing national news coverage of pedophiles being a part of these organizations and deciding that was a risk to children, decided to, to alert the children and the parents attending uh, that maybe this wasn't a great idea. And so here's the video. You can see the tail end of it. Uh, we'll see if we can, hopefully the audio plays through good enough. You hear him screaming, don't believe these men dressed as women. They're deceivers. That's not a real vagina under there, Billy. It's a penis. Don't go into the bathroom with that man. <laughs> it's not a woman. Sorry, Claire. It's okay, he's just lost. Now, I wish they had more footage of this because the article makes it sound funny as shit. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me read this out to you. At 1.50 p.m., Morgan ran past the check-in table outside of the room and into the private room. Upon entering, Morgan began to yell at approximately 75 people inside, including 25 children. Morgan was told by police present he needed to leave. <laughs> Instead, he began running around the room and yelling at them in the room telling them, don't believe the trannies, kids. They're lying. When he failed to stop yelling, he was arrested and brought on charges of, what did they hit him with? Disorderly conduct, disturbing the peace disorderly, failed to obey reasonable lawful order, resisting and interfering with an arrest and trespassing against a public agency during hours. They hit him with five different things. All because he had a problem with the, uh, again, what did she call herself? I, I don't want to misquote her here. The secret librarian advocate operative trying to get uh, a gay agenda brought forward into a library for some reason, setting up these uh, drag queen transsexual story times, uh, not vetting who these people were when the library commission, or I'm sorry, when the commissioners and the librarians met to talk about this, the library straight up admitted, we don't know who these people are. We didn't do any background check. We didn't vet anybody. We, we just found out about it ourselves a few hours before the event. So these secret librarians from the American Library Association are working on this fucking website to set shit up like this. 
And I guess this guy watches Tucker Carlson or he's heard about the news because this is like the second or third time something like that's happened and decided he didn't want the kids put at risk. And what happens to him? He gets hit with five charges, ranging from disorderly conduct to trespassing. I don't know what's going to happen to him. I don't know how severe those charges are. Are they going to drop them? I mean, he didn't assault anybody. He basically just told the kids, be a stranger. He, he went in there and did what would have been a PSA in the 1990s. Stranger danger, kids. Be, be careful when it comes to men in dresses. You can't trust them. Now, there was one other article that followed up on this, and it mentioned some of the other stuff they were trying to, uh, trying to introduce. Let me see if I can find this. Because uh, it quoted certain books I'd never heard of uh, that they were trying to get the kids to read. Uh, at these different uh, events. Let's move that out of the way. Okay. Let me pull this up for everybody. Here we go. Uh, the Rise of the Drag Queen Story Hours and How You Can Fight Back. Uh, obviously, this is a Christian news site, so they've got a skew to it. But I wanted to find... Uh, here we go. Also, you know, I want you to really look at this. What library are they... Okay, this is how weird this is. This Tessa Goldwater, Goldwasser, is involved in all of these stories. She's involved in sneaking in secret curriculum and activities. She's involved in getting the Drag uh, Queen Story Hour involved. She was involved in this most recent event. And now look what they say. The Lexington Park Library in St. Mary's County, Maryland, first came under fire in March of 2017 when local homeschool mom, uh, Georgia, discovered that several libraries were planning to host a graphic sex education workshop for 12 to 17 year olds. The workshop was co-sponsored by the libraries and the Southern Maryland Area Secular Humanist, or SMASH. It was promoted as strictly kids only and led by Bianca Palamon, or Palaminsano, a Planned Parenthood certified sex educator, author of Safer Sex for Trans Bodies and founder of Intimate Health Counseling. So our librarian who was already involved and doing all sorts of weird shit, wanted to set up sex education camps for preteens to teenagers and have them hosted by people in Planned Parenthood. And what is her background in sex education? Writing a book about sex for trans people. That's really weird. All of these events are connected. It's been going on for two to three years. <laughs> At the heart of it are these secret operatives. The secret American Library Association operatives. You know, I think Alex Jones might have been wrong. It's not the water that's turning the frogs gay. <laughs> or no, the water's not just turning the frogs gay. The librarians are turning the kids gay. He wasn't looking big enough. He was too focused on one thing to see the bigger picture of what's going on out there. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Oh, yeah, and I'm sorry, the activity feed went down. I know somebody said earlier, uh, hey, Jim, come out to Texas and I'll, I'll, I'll pave your driveway and we can have a beer together. Uh, sounds like a wonderful offer. And then from Brew 98, it's just a coincidence. It's always the same people that push this shit. Well, I I don't know what to tell you. I'm sure Miss Goldwasser is just a loving woman. From HTR to you, I hope they don't add chemicals in the water. And the Afio answer... Not sure if you watched the YouTube channel Porcelain, but they finally released their documentary on Baked Alaska. And you were highlighted on the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, on there, uh, burying him. Would you play some of it on stream? Uh, yeah, I know he released it. I think it's like an hour and a half long. I haven't had, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Um, so I'll probably watch it first, and then I'll pick out like some uh, timestamps and we'll watch some of it on Monday. I, I don't know what iteration Baked Alaska is on now. He's gone through like, Four or five different changes. He's like a snake. You know how a snake changes, it sheds its skin? That's Baked Alaska. One day he's a lip shit working at BuzzFeed. The next day he's a Trump supporter. Then he's back to being a lip shit. Then he's Yang Gang. Then he's back to being a Trump supporter. He's a very fair weather, uh, fair weather fellow. You know, he's the kind of guy that's there in the good times. But when shit gets bad, he's nowhere to be found. You know, I remember getting so much shit too. Uh, when I went after him for turning on his audience because he wanted some pussy. You know, I, I told him, you're, you're turning on these people and you're calling them toxic and problematic, saying you don't like them and you don't want them around anymore, even though they kind of built you up and they gave you money. And now you're saying they're not good enough. 
essentially. Everybody's like, oh, you're overreacting, uh, Jim. But what happened? He immediately, you know, within a year or so, turns around and says, I was brainwashed by the alt-right and those neo-Nazis. So I, I was 100% correct in my assessment of him and what he was doing, of trying to just use a community to make some cash and uh, build up a big enough profile to move on to something else later on. So, yeah, I'm sure the, the documentary probably will cover a lot of that, I'm guessing. Uh, just his different iterations of going from group to group to group and kind of uh, changing it up. I, I don't even know what he's doing right now. I think the last I heard, he's, I think he's on D Live actually. Uh, I'm not even sure if he's still around. I noticed a lot of people came over to D Live and then uh, kind of fucked off. Uh, they were here for a while and then just kind of disappeared. Uh, like uh, certain people from like Ice Poseidon's group, I can't, there's some Brit um, that was like over here streaming almost every day for like a month and then he just up and vanished. So I, I don't know what happened to him. I know PewDiePie's got the deal that they're doing with uh, DLive and there you know, other people that are globally partnered that still show up and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I vaguely remember Baked coming over here and he was here for like a month and then he was gone. You know, so far my experience with the website's been pretty good. I mean, this we're on uh, the end of the, I guess, the third week. You know, I've, I've done seven shows. This would be the seventh. And uh, as long as I have that X tag on, we're pretty much left alone. And we really haven't had any issues. The uh, site administrators haven't said anything to me, so I think we're fine. You know, I'm, I'm fine with not being on the front page. I'm fine with being uh, hidden behind the age restriction tab. I, you know, I, I prefer it, to be honest with you. Uh, as long as we've got our own little corner to talk about weird shit and laugh at stuff and get angry at shit, I'm fine. Now, you know, that's one of the things that appealed to me about Stream Me. You could restrict it and basically be hidden and just do your own fucking thing and nobody nobody really fucked with you. You're left to your own devices and that's what I that's what I like. That's what I appreciate uh, when it comes to this streaming shit. Because God knows you could not do it on Twitch and I have a feeling that YouTube especially with the new implementations of rules that are coming on July 22nd. And then the second batch will hit, I believe from what I heard, the end of October, the beginning of November. Uh, they're implementing new rules about creator on creator harassment and how that affects your channel. You know, right now YouTube is doing, I, I don't get it, uh, to be honest with you, of what's going on with YouTube. Uh, on the one hand, they're censoring. And on the other hand, they're loosening up. You know, they moved away from the three strikes, you're out policy. They moved away from the, if you get a strike, you're banned 90 days from streaming. And they relaxed on that. And as far as copyright goes, from what I understand, they're going to be relaxing on that as well. Uh, they're implementing, or they're going to begin to implement a new system where if you get a copyright strike on a video, you no longer have to take the whole video down. They will make the copyright complainant uh, list the specific content that violates copyright and then allow you to edit it out and keep the video up. Uh, at least that's my understanding of what it's going to be like going forward. So, I, I, you know, on the one hand, they're doing shit like that. And on the other hand, they're going to, you know, her, uh, creator versus creator harassment and uh, new policies about being nice and what you can say and can't say. So I, I don't know. It feels like there are two different groups at YouTube right now that are trying to steer the direction on how they interact with people that upload shit onto their website. I mean, there's some people that are always going to be out. Um, you know, I, I really like Murdoch Murdoch. I like their show. Uh, you can't find that on YouTube. You can't even find censored versions of that on YouTube. Like, that has been, that is uh, verboten. It is not allowed. It is completely ejected from the website. They will never allow that shit. You have to go to BitChute or Dailymotion to watch it. Uh, they're really uptight about it. Like, all the up uh, the re-uploads that I'd watched, the playlist that had, like, the whole collection, just getting wiped out left and right. You know, and so there, there are creators like that, content like that, that they're, it's never going to show up again. I mean, it's, that's just gone, which sucks. And I don't know how far they're going to extend that, how far they're going to take that out into the more absurd direction. I mean, if you're not going to let comedy and satire and uh, just straight up humor on the website, you know, what, what is going to, what's going to, what's going to count as harassment against another fucking creator? You know, a lot of the, a lot of the content that exists on YouTube is people making fun of each other. Uh, you're, you're talking about an entire decent portion, percentage of the content getting wiped out, potentially, uh, from new rule implementation. So, I don't know. But, from what I hear, 
sometime from the 22nd to the end of July, there's going to be some update. And then October, November, there's going to be another update. And then the copyright thing, who fucking knows when that gets rolled out in full. I don't know. Ah, oh, Jesus. Uh, so far, I guess, at the very least. Uh, DLive is, is working out. Uh, BitChute seems to be fine. I ran into a small issue trying to... I've been uploading uh, videos over there, but for some reason I cannot get a specific video to go through. I've tried like four or five fucking times. Every time I try to upload it, it just doesn't complete. Uh, so I, I don't know why. I wrote an email. Hopefully I'll hear back and find out what exactly went wrong. Uh, because I've got like two other two other series uh, to put up and then I'm, you know the backlog is up there I guess so when uh, eventually all my shit disappears there's at least one little archive of it that you can go watch on a site that won't just yank it down to make it go away I'm sorry I'm, I'm rambling chat rambling about shit uh, all over the place today labor things got me got me spooked got me spooked what was the find this here uh, Coyla Dante uh, what's the over under on Goldwasser being a real woman <laughs> uh, well I'm going to say uh, the over is an overly abundant amount of testosterone in her blood and the under would be the penis dangling from between her legs so I'm going to say that's, that's 100% probably I'm going to guess uh, uh, <laughs> Miss Goldwasser uh, has probably got uh, quite the sausage dangling from her German meat shop. Um, or, I'm sorry, transclit. Beautiful transclit. Transvagina. I'm sorry, I'm being very sexist, very ableist today about the things I said. Uh, just bigoted, really. Bigoted, terribly bigoted. I need to use a, appropriate terms. Otherwise, the fucking librarians are going to come to get me. I'm going to be taught a lesson. By those tough talking, uh, rough riding librarian association members, they're gonna make me read. They're gonna make me read gay kid stories until I want to suck dick. That's my punishment for going against the almighty, all powerful library association. <laughs> Fucking Lexington County. Oh man, it's just, it's clown world. It really is. It's uh, it's uh, ridiculous shit. Uh, but that was what I wanted to focus on today. I wanted to talk about Libra because the Libra thing spooks me. I think it's just a bad direction to go into. As far as Epstein, I definitely see him going to jail. And uh, I guess if you have children, keep them away from the library. Terrible idea to go to the library with your kids. They're going to end up wearing dresses. You're going to drop them off for story time with Barney and pick them up. And they're going to have uh, painted nails and a wig on. And they're going to want you to buy them high heels. Talking about your sons, your your daughters. Uh, I, I don't... They're going to have uh, a pixie cut haircut. Wearing overalls. Asking you for Tonka trucks or some shit. I don't know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be very confusing for you as a parent. You're just not going to know what's going on. It's going to be all topsy-turvy. And the uh, van ride home. Or I'm sorry, the van ride to the soccer field to pick your kid up. The other one. And then to go home. Yes, I see a lot of clowns dancing. In fact, I think I have a dancing clown. Where the fuck is that thing? I'll put it in chat. There we go. That's That works. A lot of dancing puddings and a lot of dancing clowns. It's one of those days. Uh, what was the video? Somebody put this up in Super Chat. Let me see if I can find this here. All right, so what was this called? Uh, a recommendation that came through. Uh, okay, so this is called Gail Reads from Jesus, the Eternal Bridegroom. And apparently this is a, 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 how did you describe it? What the fuck did you describe this as? Uh, it's a video of an old boomer lady reading her Jesus gay fanfic. Are you, are, are you like being literal? She made a, a fanfic about Jesus being gay? Uh, cause that would be, <laughs> that would be something. I'll give you that much. Well, let me just cue this up. Well, I guess we'll take a listen. Uh, maybe it's good. I've just got to transfer it here. It's a hell of a title. All right. Uh, this is her book she made. I will be reading from G. Okay. 
All right, let me, uh, let me put this I will be reading from Jesus, the Eternal Bridegroom, The Forbidden Abyss, Part 2. I'm the author, Gabriel Chana. This is taken from the chapter, San Francisco Jesuit Homosexual Compound. They walked by Terrance in a... I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry, what? This takes place at the Homosexual Compound in San Francisco? Is that what she said? Chana. This is taken from the chapter, San Francisco Jesuit Homosexual Compound. They walked by Terrance in a procession, one by one, slapping him in the face. You're not fit to have the torture we've given to your friends, because you've never had brain-to-brain -brain sex with Gail. They pulled down their pants and flung their penises at him. She won't ever make love to you because you're black. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, we might have a winner here, folks. Uh, thank you to... <laughs> what was the username? Uh, where the fuck was this? Uh, Ronson. All right, well, let's listen to Gail's erotic sexual fan fiction about homosexuals from California flinging their penises at her. I'm sorry, at Jesus, I'm guessing. Uh, and saying that uh, he's never going to get none with Gail, uh, our reader, because uh, there, <laughs> there he's not black. It reminded me of Jesus when he faced his accusers before they humiliated him on the cross. How they all went up to him and bashed his face in with their fists. Ah, Lord, the disciple is not above his master. Then they ripped off his clothes and forced him to carry his own cross, exposed, nude, and humiliated before the world. How Satan loved to torture Jesus. How he writhed with jealousy that he could never be as awesome as God's son. How the inferior ones punished those superior to them. How horrible that you couldn't get them to leave you alone unless you executed them because they refuse to give up their evil, their murders, and their tortures any- Oh, I'm sorry. It looks like the, the, the actual Super Chat had a specific time code. Uh, we might have to jump to that. Let me, let me see what the exact number was here. Uh, go to 734. Uh, it's very funny. All right, let's, let's jump ahead a little bit to the specific time. Uh, there, we'll, we'll start it at 7 and see what happens with Gail's erotic fan fiction. Just then another Jesuit shoved his penis into Gerard's anus, both the Jesuit in his mouth. <laughs> you know what? We're going to back up a little bit. I think you might have overshot the time code on that one. Uh, let's go to let's go to six and see how the Jesuit got a dick shoved in his mouth and up his ass. Oh, Jesus, help me. Help us all. Is this what we must endure because we love the forbidden Gail? Why is she forbidden? Why must we suffer for loving greatness? Oh, Jesus, are you there? After stripping Gerard Butler, they stared at him and pointed, giggling and hee high. Ah, what a fine specimen. What fun. They pulled a dress over his head and arms, dressing him like a little girl. Oh, that's cute, they said, limping their hands at him. They must have been part of the Library Association of America. It sounds like their style. With smiles so wide you could almost see all their teeth, the Jesuit pried open Gerard's mouth and shoved a penis in. Our wonderful psychiatrist would need some intervention after this. How I felt for Gerard, so selfless. He always thought of us. Who would counsel him when all this was over? Come on, little girl. Suck hard on your mom. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Oh, wow. Come on, little girl. Suck hard on your mama's nipple. Just then another Jesuit shoved his penis into Gerard's anus, both the Jesuit in his mouth, and the one from behind coordinated their thrusting motions like in a dance. I rubbed my eyes in disbelief. Tell me this is a dream, Jesus. Tell me we aren't doing this. But the penis was in my thrusting like a wild Indian. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I like how she, she really has a way with words. The penis was in my mouth thrusting like a wild Indian as Gerard in his dress was being sodomized by Jesuit priests who told him to suck it like it was his mommy's nipple. And the salty taste of semen would not let me deny the reality of my existence. When they came to Hugh Jackman, he raised his fists and shot the fist into the Jesuits who approached him. The Jesuits flew back onto the wall, about ten Jesuits, then flew themselves onto Hugh and held him down. A black Jesuit with elephant legs and blubber protruding from his belly and bulges of fat on his back shoved his rear onto Hugh's face. Bubba, they said to the black Jesuit, 
teach him for beating us up. Oh, I don't like where this is going. A big fat black man sticks. Is he going to get brapped? This guy's getting gang raped and he's about to get brapped on by a big ass black bull? The black Jesuit named Bubba shoved his anus onto Hugh's mouth. Lick my butthole, he laughed. Ten Jesuits pinned Hugh to the floor, freezing his arms and legs. They hoisted his face onto the two balls of fat above Bubba, Bubba's legs, his rump, and shoved Hugh's face between the balls. Now lick the butthole like a good boy. Wow, this chick is something else. They twisted his arm and he grimaced in pain. His tongue came out and they separated the balls of fat, exposing the zinnia-flowered hole. <clears throat> his tongue traveling <clears throat> over its surface. Then we heard an explosion, and brown feces, ex feces exploded on the huge face. <laughs> he got brapped on! <laughs> this dude! This dude gets dressed up by Jesuits who gang rape him. And then they bring in the biggest, fattest black dude they can find. And they make him take a giant deuce right on his fucking face. Bring in Bubba the big black bull and have him brap right in this guy's mouth. And he just unloads a turd missile right down this guy's throat. Into his mouth. I could see a scowl on Hugh's face, but the Jesuits held him firm in his place, his arms and legs frozen. The Jesuits filmed us the entire time with cameras and movie equipment. It reminded me of my time at the San Francisco Zoo when Lori raped me, raped me with elephants, eels, and God knows what else in September 1992 very specific date i guess i guess if you got raped by an elephant you probably are going to that's going to be something you're going to mark on the calendar really if you live through it uh, you know i remember back in 1991 on august 15th when the elephant with its four foot long penis raped me and i was able to crawl away and not bleed to death so you, you see people <clears throat> this is from my book <clears throat> boy if i had a time making this video Jesus, the Eternal Bridegroom. I'm reading you from it. This book goes really deep into the hearts and souls of Jesus Christ. It goes really deep into the hearts and souls of Jesus. You know, like in that one, uh, one, uh, one, uh, one of those uh, uh, apostles, you know, one of their testimonies when they talked about black men shitting in people's faces. I remember that. I think that was the book of Timothy. I'm pretty sure that was Tim, or maybe Corinthians. I think that's, yeah, that's more Corinthians, really. Black men brapping in your face. Seems like a Corinthians thing. Gail Cords Schuler. I've never heard of this woman. Does she have more As amazing... <laughs> Does she read more? Please tell me she reads more. Uh, let's see if we can... I just want to... I want to hear more about her book. That's what I'm interested in. Give me one second. Uh, it's my first time looking at her channel. Let me see if I can find more of her amazing book. I will be reading from Jesus the Eternal... Okay, the Eternal Bride. As he drove his... Oh my God, she's got the whole thing up. Children's audiobook? No. There's no way she has As a children's did. audiobook version of this. <laughs> this is a children's audiobook. The gang raping Jesuit black men shitting on you book has a children's version. Chat, do we watch it? Do we do we do we dare to watch this? I don't know. It's asking for trouble. I don't know what the, what makes it the children's version. Uh, so, uh, Gopnik, uh, Jim, why do you always end up playing gay porn? Well, I mean, come on. What better kind of porn is there? Well, <laughs> welcome to the internet. Uh, a lot of yeses. Apparently, Chad is very. You're very excited about hearing the ch children's version of <laughs> the Forbidden Fruit. Uh, from Joshua Moon, since you're pretty much left to your own devices here on DLive, any chance of continuing watching Photon? I liked Medicare Science Theater 3000 on streaming. Uh, yeah, I actually do plan on finishing up Photon. I think we've got about seven episodes left. I'll probably spread them out uh, bits and pieces here and there. From the Afio Answer, new algorithm change, small YouTube news channels were 50% of views and recommendations to corporate channels as of January last month. The ratio went to 2575, and autoplay will send you to CNN, Fox, or NBC. And from Kaiser Split Dick, 
something to play us out on? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, you know, with the, the algorithm and how YouTube works, uh, I, I watch a lot of different channels on YouTube. Uh, actually, let me, I'll, I'll tell you something weird I've been seeing. And then we're going to listen to the audiobook. So well, we definitely will watch it. Uh, I'm not going to not watch that. Uh, what is the channel? History Buffs was the channel. Uh, it's just the dude that watches movies and then talks about the history behind the shit the movie's covering. Uh, and he, he's done like a couple of... There's nothing political. There's no social views or anything at all attached to any of this. But he gets those Wikipedia warnings put under his videos for some reason. And I have no idea why. Like, again, Google, it, it just does things that uh, I don't understand what the purpose is. Okay, enough of that. We got sidetracked enough. I hope you're ready. This is part one of eight, The Forbidden Abyss, part one, children's audiobook. I don't know. This could be shit. This might be good. Who knows? It's only four minutes long. Let's find out if we found a winner or if uh, Gail disappoints. As he drove his car underneath the Paramount Pictures' cream and gold arches and into the studio parking lot, he felt his pulse rate quicken. He even now disliked the Spanish tile roofs of the studio because it reminded him that Gail was far away in Seattle, surrounded by evergreen mountains and cool, crisp air, and she had never been here in the Southern California sun with him making love to him. He looked about and saw no sign of Lori. When I'm sorry, we've already gotten to the point of wanting to fuck Gail? We're 20 seconds in, and it's already talking about wanting to fuck Gail. In Seattle, surrounded by evergreen mountains and cool, crisp air, and she had never been here in the Southern California sun with him making love to him. He looked about and saw no sign of Lori. Once he parked his car, he phoned his friend and co-star LeVar Burton from inside his car. Hey Brent, what's going on with you and Lori? Brent wailed on the phone for at least a minute. Give me time to get myself together. Hey, what I'm about to tell you remains top secret, all right? Sure, LeVar paused, as if brazing for the worst. Hey, I don't like Lori. Something's not right about her. LeVar, it's horrible. I was in the green room, you know, where we go to prepare before a shoot. Patrick Stewart got me a beer, and I set it down for just a second, and that's when Lori spiked it with some mind control drugs. I wasn't feeling well after I drank the spiked drink, so I went to lay down. That's when I started having a vivid dream about making love to Gail. <laughs> Okay, we yeah, this is going to be gold, really. Uh, already, already, uh, somebody's been drugged and they're getting raped. Children's story time. My God, Brent, there are mirrors all over the place in that room. Yeah, so we can see ourselves as we rehearse between shoots, but I saw myself being raped by Lori in those mirrors from all these different angles. Brent wailed and couldn't stop. What a little cuck. Oh, look at the little bitch boy. Aww. You got gang. You got raped by a woman that drugged you in a room full of mirrors. Kids' book, by the way. Kids' book. Children's book. Children's audio book. Great, great follow-up to Teddy Ruxpin and MLP <laughs> and Barney. I, Mommy, Daddy, what's getting drugged by mind control mean? Well, I, you know, my sweet, innocent little three-year-old, just listen to Gail talk about the gang rape first. How did Lori get in bed with you? Well, I was feeling ill, so I went to lay down. I started having a dream about Gail when Lori walked in. My vision was so hazy I thought it was Gail. It was the mind control drugs. Brent wailed so much he couldn't talk. All right, Brent, whenever you're ready. Hey, let's talk. Okay, can I, 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 maybe they're working on a budget here, but I'd like to imagine this is a, a creative choice. This guy is sobbing. He's literally on the verge of tears, probably going to kill himself. Probably going to throw himself off a fucking bridge or something because he's been raped after being drugged and it's fucked him up greatly and here's his buddy lavar burton and look at that smile look at he thinks this is the funniest shit he's ever heard oh you got raped did you that's some funny stuff tell me some more buddy i need a good laugh whitey <laughs> you fucking cuck talk about this at my place okay after work come on over to my house that evening, LeVar held Brent in his arms and rocked Brent from behind, while Brent told LeVar his story. Oh, I got a f I don't know if I like where this is going, chat. I've got a bad feeling. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, uh, children's book. Okay. I started having a dream about Gail. Brent sniffed and cried. LeVar, I can't tell you. This just can't be real. Calm down. I'm holding you in my arms. I believe you, Brent. I believe everything you're saying, and I know you love Gail. 
Lavar checked out Brent's rear with swollen flesh, bleeding, and oozing. <laughs> That's what? No! <laughs> That's amazing! Can you please, can you please check my asshole for damage? I was brutally sodomized after getting drugged at a Hollywood studio, and my I've been shitting blood for three days. My good black friend, can you take a look at my chocolate starfish? And see if I need stitches. Am I hemorrhaging internally from my anus? Losing and stitches everywhere. Wow, how did Lori do this to you? My vision was so hazy. I thought Gail and I were making love. It was the mind control drugs. That's when Lori climbed on me and started raping me. What did she do, Brent? She got on top of me, cowgirl, and she was doing me on top. Brent, you have such a long penis. How in the world? Yeah, and the weird thing is, she was able to sit all the way down on it. All 18.25 inches. <laughs> Come on! Wow, Gail. Gail, Gail, Gail. 18... 18.25 inches, kids. <laughs> Just, it's absurd, I love it. It's a very specific number. My eight... My foot and a half long cock, and she took it all. And then she fucked me with a soda can. LeVar. It was pretty freaky. Was that the only sex you had with her? No. We did it all three holes, vaginally, orally, and anal. It was really horrible. How long did it last? After about twenty minutes, I ejaculated, and she got off and then sucked my penis. Then she got back on top of me, and this time she sat on it again, but she put it in her anus. It was all three. Did you think you were doing all three holes with Gail? No, I just thought Gail and I were doing it vaginally. It was so weird, because I was thinking Gail and I were in the missionary position the whole time. Regular sex. If you- <laughs> just- oh, wow! Oh, if you love Gail like I do, you should purchase a copy of her amazing- at Amazon.com! <laughs> it's recommended by Jesus Christ! Well, okay. If you thought it was regular sex, how do you know you did all three holes? Because the memories came flooding back to me after the drugs started to wear off. That's awful, Brent. They came back pretty vividly. Exactly how long did your sex with Lori last? I'm unsure, since I was drugged out pretty bad, but it had to be at least a few hours. We're only three minutes and thirty- Like, this is so much sex. There's so much sex being talked about. <laughs> we already know that he's been raped, his asshole is in tatters, he has an 18.25 inch penis. He had sex in all three holes. She sucked his penis. Lots of ejaculation going on. <laughs> That's, and it's only been three and a half minutes. Wow. Then I woke up with her in bed with me. I kicked her out, wondering what happened. That's when I started to remember. Brent wailed and his body heaved. LeVar tightened his grip on the forlorn soul who was grasping at straws just to keep his sanity. Don't you think you ought to tell Gail about this? Brent's face became ashen. No, don't tell her, Lavar. Promise me. Really? It's too dangerous to tell her. Not as long as Lori still roams about Paramount Studios. Lori keeps threatening to kill Gail if I tell her. After what she's done to me, she's capable of anything. Well, she definitely sounds capable of anything. Oh, you know, uh, let me just uh, let me turn that there. What other amazing things are on this particular... I mean, she's still uploading videos just from a day ago. Just for, uh, is there a playlist of her amazing literature? Let's find out. Let's find out. Create a playlist. I, I want to see if I can find more of her books. I think I think we have a prolific author on our hands. And, uh, yeah, I see people say, oh, she's got an Ed page, all their stuff out there. I'm sure there is. <laughs> How could there not be? Oh, my God, chat. The whole thing is up. Oh, I'm really tempted to watch this. I'm actually quite tempted to watch this whole thing. Um, as you can see, the entire children's book is up on Gail's page. All eight parts of it, uh, each seem to be a few minutes long, all with their own unique illustrations. Looks like he maybe fucks a cat in part two. Part three looks like a corpse is getting raped. Uh, part four, I'm going to guess somebody gets poisoned. Part five and six are dedicated to the black man fucking the white boy. Part seven... Looks like uh, Weinstein <laughs> comes in and gives somebody a job. And part eight looks like the black guy just kills everybody by lighting them on fire. Uh, what What is the description of this amazing audiobook? Jesus Christ commissioned an artist and an actor to read from chapter entitled September 1992. 
the stalker for a lifetime from gail's book the forbidden abyss part one the other 18 other 18 chapters are still waiting to be read from gail's book the forbidden abyss part one which can be ordered and she gives her website i think this woman's work needs to be completely transcribed in audiobook format i can't imagine letting this go this is all from part one you know if you tally it up you're looking at about 20 minutes here oh uh, 18 chapters 20 minutes a piece you, you know you're looking at a good six hours of entertainment i don't know if that artist can can finish up this beauty of a book <laughs> oh i don't know I, i'll put it to you chat uh you know we can you tell me what you want do do you want to watch the rest of this i will wait for your decision from man with memes i've yet to catch a scream glad to see you while well, you turned in for you tuned in for a doozy of one we're reading the greatest children's book ever <laughs> ever put to uh, paper all right let's see what chat say uh play all of it yes i want to hear all of it yes yes it seems like the yeses have it there's one god no from the only sane person in chat uh the rest of you seem to want to hear about gail's adventures with gay sex and the man with the 18.25 inch penis i don't blame you a dick that size is just too interesting to pass up i'm gonna i'm gonna need a real drink for this one uh let's do another small break and when we come back we're gonna sit down and we're gonna watch at least part one which is eight videos seven videos to go of gail's amazing children's audiobook we'll watch through it all and we'll see what happens i'm excited i think chapter one's gonna be something special i got a good feeling about it uh, let me pick uh, a nice little musical interlude uh, to play while we do this. Uh, you know, well, maybe we'll just do that one. Uh, we'll do this one. Uh, take a few minutes break. I'm going to go grab a drink. And then when we come back, we will finish up and watch uh, part one of Gail's amazing book. Say
All right. Let us join in and watch an amazing story unfold. Let me just get this queued up here. Chad, I hope you're excited. Hope you're excited. We're going to be jumping into a, the best children's audiobook ever created on the internet. I'm fucking psyched for it. Uh, from Anonymous, she's an insane schizo. Check out her Ed page. Uh, for anybody interested, the Ed page is encyclopediadramatica.rs backslash Gabriel underscore uh, Chana, C H A N A. And from Coila Dante, after Photon, may I suggest Lex? It's an old school sci fi show that's essentially a porno where the sex starts. Uh, never starts, so it's 45 minutes of bad special effects and innuendo. I actually vaguely remember Lex. Was that the one where they flew around in the giant, uh, it looked like a fly? Was there a spaceship? It's like a intergalactic uh, janitor, if I remember correctly. Uh, maybe we can check out some Lex, but we've got a lot of Photon to work through first. Uh, but regardless, doesn't matter. Let us jump into this amazing story. We've watched part one, so we'll continue off with part two of the Forbidden Abyss part one children's audiobook. The brain control drugs Lori injected into him somewhat numbed the pain as she jammed her fist into his rear over and over. But once the drugs were off... You know, that's, when you're an author, you really got to grab people's attention. If you're a creative type, you need to draw them in. And nothing draws me into a book more than starting it off with some hardcore fist fucking. All right? You want to get me invested in your book? Started off with a man getting fist fucked. His rear felt like a thousand knives every time he moved. Hours later, he awakened, as if coming out of anesthesia, his rectum feeling as if it had been stabbed with a thousand knives. The details flooded back to him, like a horror movie of memories that seemed endless. All the agonizing pain he felt when, he, when she smashed her fist into his rectum came back to him with full force, as if he was experiencing her thrusting motions in the here and now, with each lorry moment a memory alive rambling about his consciousness, so real and vivid he could not shove the experience away, unable to escape as it all played back in his mind. He withdrew into himself again, hating himself for being so dirty and vulgar and violated. Oh God, he had to stop her, but how? How in the world did she get away with this? Must he stop eating? Sleeping? Drinking? Oh, God, what will she do next? You know, I'm actually really curious exactly what she's going to do next. Because uh, she's raped him, drugged him, and fist-fucked him. Like, what, you know, what's what's uh, option B on this buffet? Uh, I don't know where it's going, but let's... I, I Fingers crossed it's going to get dark. On another day, she had slipped in the drugs and brought in the cat they used on the set to play spot. She took her strap-on dildo and started slapping... No, 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 no. <laughs> she's going to fuck the cat, isn't she? She's going to fuck the cat or she's going to make him fuck the cat. Somebody's fucking a cat in part two. ...the cat in the face with it, beating the animal heartlessly. <laughs> what? She took her strap-on dildo and started slapping the cat in the face with it, beating the animal heartlessly, and brought in the cat they used on the set to play spot. She took her strap-on dildo and started slapping the cat in the face with it, beating the animal heartlessly and laughing. Here, pussy, pussy, pussy. Oh, you want some catnip? Whack, whack, whack. Oh, oh, who's a bad kitty? Who's a bad kitty? You like that? Oh, you like that dildo kitty? Oh, come here, Garfield. I got lasagna for you. Then when she knew the drugs were at full effect, she shouted, Brent, have sex with the cat. <laughs> oh, this art is amazing. When the memories flooded back the next morning after the deed, as he awakened and the brain control wore off, he remembered forcing his penis inside Spot's tiny vagina. <laughs> oh, fuck! He's raping a cat! <laughs> oh, shit! Is it, he's really, he's fucking the cat. It was it a joke? He's actually fucking the cat. <laughs> Look at this artwork! <laughs> She's sitting there with a 12-inch dick. Brent, have sex with this cat! <laughs> There's some mind control drugs on the ground. <laughs> Look at the cat screaming meow. <laughs> Look at his ass. Look at his. Look at his ass. Oh, he's fucking a cat to death. She wrote a children's book where a man fucks a cat to death. She wrote a children's book where a dude fucks a cat to death. Forcing his penis inside Spot's tiny vagina. It was awful for her, and she was screeching. She was yowling and meowing. <laughs> Fucking cat's faces! Look at the cat's face! Holy shit! 
It's not gonna survive. He has an 18-inch penis. That cat's not. That cat's. <laughs> that's the length of the cat. His dick's gonna come out of its mouth. It's like some. It's like some Japanese anime shit. It's like hentai. It's Western hentai. His penis is gonna come out of that cat's mouth. Yowling and meowing, and Lori laughed and laughed. Spot was so traumatized that they had to get a new cat to play the role. The color and breed of cat changed during the episodes due to the sexual trauma the animal had received. She would no longer come near Brent. She'd run away, and any time she saw something phallic, she meowed and had a panic attack like she was shell-shocked. Uh, you know, fuck, I'd be shell-shocked too if somebody stuck an 18-inch long penis inside me. I can sympathize with the cat. If I had an 18-inch dick go inside my rectum, I'd be pretty fucking shell-shocked too. Var and Brent ate hot dogs for lunch they got at the studio cafe. Spot walked up to them. I love that. <laughs> Look at the cat's face. I can't believe it. This is the most amazing shit I've ever seen. They're laughing. They're cooking. I, this, they're, they're just, they're having some hot dogs. Hey, remember that time I fucked a cat to death? <laughs> that was good times. And then the cat's off in the corner. Look at the face it's making. It's like a rape victim. It's just completely fucked up. Then, upon seeing Brent, panicked and scampered away. Brent hung his head in shame that he had tortured an innocent animal with his penis, feeling fully to blame, because it was his penis, after all, that had committed the heinous act. He loved that cat. He tried to apologize to her, crying. Okay, again, children's audiobook. I love that. Children's audiobook. Amazing. Spot, I didn't mean to hurt you. Please, please forgive me. Oh, please forgive me, Spot. But Spot yowled and ran away. Brent thought, is this what Gail will do if she finds out what I've done? Brent imagined the look of horror on Gail's face. This dude busted a nut so hard his fucking eyeballs disappeared. He came so hard inside of that cat, his eyeballs vanished. He had enough force in his ejaculation to smash it into a brick wall across the room at like 30 miles an hour. The cat is now semi-retarded. That face it was making earlier... Where's that face it was making earlier? <laughs> this face? That's not a look of fear. It's actually handicapped now. He fucking gave it head trauma. The cat is retarded. Because <laughs> he came that hard. Brent imagined the look of horror on Gail's face if he dared to reveal to her what his body had done the past week to Spot, to Lori. Gail would run away from me, just like Spot. I'd scare her away forever. And to think before I tormented Spot... The cat used to cuddle on my lap. Now one look at me and she races down the hallway. My relationship with Gail has been scarred forever. Brent fought back tears, bit his lower lip, which quivered. Gail will never want anything to do with me anymore. Uh, well, you know, understandable. I wouldn't want to sit on your lap either after you fucked me across the room. <laughs> Jeez, I... I can't believe I was right. I was joking when I said it looks like somebody fucks a cat. I didn't think he was actually going to fuck a cat. I didn't think it was going to get that dark that quick. Oh, part three, please. Lori stabbed injections into him and spiked his drinks and his meals at the Paramount Studios commissary. She put him into another dimension so that he could not separate fantasy from reality. He ended up in the emergency room. She fisted him so hard, ripping his flesh apart, blood spewed out from his rear onto the floor. Holy shit. Okay, this woman <laughs> this woman is a psychopath. Look how look how pleased she is. She's so happy. <laughs> She's got the biggest smile in the world. Mind control drugs and a 4 foot long I I don't even know how thick that thing is. <laughs> Those aren't bumps, they're ball bearings. She took out of farm equipment. Like this thing is enormous. <laughs> it's the size of a toddler. She fucked him with this. With no pity for the torture she inflicted on him, she laughed at him. Ha, I got you. You know you like this. You love this. If you dare tell Gail about this, I'll kill her, just like I might kill you. But I think I'd rather have all this glorious sex with you, to keep you alive so we can make love. Her laughter rocked the walls of his studio, like a vampire who had just sucked all the blood out of him and wanted more, after ravaging his neck and exposing his jugular vein. He inundated himself with painkillers to perform his scenes as Data in the Fistful of Datas, unable to keep his legs together as he walked in some scenes, walking- She fist-fucked him so hard he can't even walk straight. 
She she destroyed this man's asshole like he destroyed that cat's asshole. With a limp, which the studio wrote into the scene as comedy. Oh, did Mr. Hershowitz think it was funny? Oh, oh, you're telling me that, uh, that Laurie fist-fucked you so hard you can't walk straight? Oh, oh, that's terrible. We're gonna write that into a scene. That's funny, Goy. Laurie seemed to read his mind and followed him everywhere in the studio when he was on breaks from filming. Brent was staying late in the studio one night. Macaulay Culkin had come to visit that evening because he was a huge fan of the show and wanted to meet Brent. Brent sat down with him and engaged him in some discussion about the show. After having a nice long chat, they both went to bed. It was nothing unusual. But as it turned out later on, that's not what really happened. During the Oh, does he f <laughs> does he anally rape Macaulay Culkin? Is that his follow-up act to sodomizing a cat? Is he fucks the kid from Home Alone? In the middle of their conversation, what actually happened was Brent got up to go use the restroom, and when he came back, raped you're gonna get raped so hard if you drink that jesus juice <laughs> this isn't like oh man how is this still up on youtube <laughs> who can write a rape scene with macaulay culkin getting fist fucked and it's still up on youtube <laughs> you can't talk about trump without getting thrown off macaulay culkin's getting fist fucked and that's fine that's good <laughs> that's amazing uh you, you know what we're gonna <laughs> i can't we're gonna have to skip that part uh, chat, that's part three. If you want to you want to read about him raping Macaulay Culkin, uh, you're going to have to go to part three. In fact, now that's made me paranoid enough that I'm going to have to just skip ahead a little bit. Just, oh my god, does he get fucked by a rhino? <laughs> he gets, what the fuck? Okay, we're past Macaulay Culkin getting brutally raped. Uh, let's jump into part four. The pinnacle of the rape happened one afternoon after he had just got out on break. At that point, Brent was afraid to eat, worried about possible contaminants in his food, so he brought his own food from home and hid his water bottles. He toted them all around the studio with him in bags so that no one else could touch them. But Lori had drugged the water coming from the water fountain, so when he ran out of water on set, he used to sweat a lot under all that makeup, so he... Can I just ask, like, I I'm so fascinated now by the characters. Like, what's Lori's deal? Does she just go around everywhere with a bucking bottle called Mind Control Drugs? And just massive dildos and shit? Like, she's she's drugging everybody. She's drugging child actors. She's drugging men on set. She just walks around with a kit for date rape. And she just brutally sodomizes people with her fist. And it's like, a it's an everyday thing for her. He would drink a lot of water, and it had been ten hours on set already. He consumed the drugs when he stopped at the fountain. The next thing he remembered, he walked back on set, and the day continued as normal. The next day, once the brain control wore off, Brent had perfect recall of what really happened. Though, at this stage, he was so drugged out that his psychiatrist later wondered if perhaps these events may have been false memories that Jesuits forced into him, just to torment him. Lori took a- You know, those Jesuits love introducing false memories of animals at the zoo raping you. ...his hand in the hallway and led him out of the back of the building taking him to her car, where she proceeded to drive all the way from Los Angeles to the San Francisco Zoo. At the zoo, she had a camera with her, and a set of keys that allowed her access to all the animal pins. She took him from cage to cage- <laughs> Are you seeing this shit, chat? Please tell me that's- okay, that's full view. I thought it was a rhino. He's getting fucked in the ass by an elephant. <laughs> look at the boar! It's waiting for its turn. Look at the- look at its eyes, it's so happy. And this sadistic bitch is just smiling? And I, what is that? Something's fucking a deer. I don't even, I don't know what this is. It's the Gray Hulk? The Gray Hulk is fucking a deer. Well, an elephant, 
<laughs> Look at his face. It looks like he's taking the world's biggest shit. All the other, all the other animals behind the glass, like, thank fuck I ain't out there. I'm glad. Oh God, I'm glad I'm in my pen today. You see this crazy bitch? She's drugging everybody. She's got a bottle of mind control drugs, making that elephant fuck that dude. It made him had sex with all the animals and took pictures, laughing the whole time. Donkeys, wild dogs, turtles, monkeys, snakes, and an elephant. He felt their semen not just inside of him, but all over him. Foul, disgusting, sick. The elephant tore his insides so badly that they had to call the paramedics to stop the bleeding and stitch him back up. Hello, 911? Uh, yeah, this is the Anaheim Zoo. Uh, we have an incident, 13. Yeah, another one. Uh, yeah, Lori again. Yeah, yeah, uh, brought a new date with her. Yeah, it's the elephant this time. Uh, totally ripped his guts out. Uh, we can't get him off the elephant. The penis is still inside him. Yeah. Can you bring, uh, police? Yeah, that's a good idea. Probably going to need a few guns. <laughs> elephant hasn't uh, come yet. Uh, no, I don't think he's alive. I think he's dead. Then she made him do it again. He begged her, No, Lori, please, my anus is bleeding. I want this on a t-shirt. I want this as a t-shirt I can wear out in public. How has this not been marketed as a product? <laughs> Fuck the hats. I want to put this on a t for the love of all that is holy, my anus is bleeding. For the love of all that is holy, my anus is bleeding. It tore him up really bad. The elephant was so powerful, it pushed its penis right through his rear, ripping flesh and smashing organs. He cried the whole time, shuddering, as the elephant raped him again and again. His horror reached new heights that day. She brought out eels, stuffing baby, very tiny moray eels into the head of his penis, and shoved the big ones up his butt. Why? <laughs> She's a real mean bitch, isn't she? <laughs> like, this chick is... She, there's some childhood trauma involved here with Lori. I, I don't know what her backstory is. Maybe they go over that in the other chapters. She stuck Maury eels in his dick and then had an elephant fuck him. Scientists later decided that the part about the elephant penis may have been a false memory inserted into Brent's brain to torment him. Regardless of what really happened, Brent's injuries put him in the hospital with stitches all over his rear, offering oozing, putrefying flesh to the beholder. His sex with Lori and her zoo animals pierced his body and soul like a million knives. Now she had pictures of him being raped. You know, I gotta say, uh, the chick that's reading this isn't Gail, right? We heard Gail. This sounds like a different person. So did she... When was this made? 2013. Did she go to, like, Fiverr? And hire somebody? Could you, God, could you imagine you're a voice actress? And somebody's like, hey, I'll pay you a couple hundred bucks to do an audiobook version of my children's book. And you're like, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Just send me the money and I'll read it for you. And then this shows up. <laughs> this is what's waiting in your inbox. Do you do it? I, I, fuck, I would. I, this whole masterpiece needs to be put on the internet. Great. Making his degraded image forever prisoner on those film reels. With photographic evidence, he would never be able to escape, and should he ever shed the memories of what happened, those photos would bring it all back. Feeling like pure filth, he couldn't face up to what he did. He thought, if I explain all of this to Gail, I'll scare her away. She'll see how sick and contaminated I am, and will know I am an evil and awful person. Oh, this is all my fault. How could I allow this to happen? I'm so horrible, such a monster I don't deserve. You know, I think this guy's being overly harsh on himself. I don't know if I'd be blaming myself for getting drugged and fucked by an elephant. Like, I don't know how you get out of that. Elephants are multi-ton animals. I think once he was mounted, there was really no escape. I, you can't really... It wasn't like he was asking for it. He was addressed in a slutty manner. He got raped by an elephant. ...deserved to live. No matter where he went... She leaped on him from hidden corners, jabbing brain control drugs into him. She even put brain control drugs into the water fountain he drank from. She trailed him like a bloodhound. Ah, so you went to the big shots and they took my side. Lori's laughter cackled off the walls. You better not tell that gale about me, or I'll do worse to her than what I've done to you. I'll kill her. It took a month and many stitches to heal. The anal sex she gave him with a dildo and her fist so ravished his rectum that his rectum became butchered steak. She captured it all on film. Oh, how he loves violent sex. Lori flipped her hair, clapping her hands together, cackling with laughter. Brent has a side to him that he only reveals to me. 
I've got pictures to prove it. She can't. She revenge porned this dude. <laughs> so she's like, just to give a, a Lori recap in case you just walked in and are looking at an animation of a man's brutally ravaged asshole. Uh, Lori likes to drug people. And so far, she's fucked him with multiple dildos, fisted him repeatedly, shoved Maury eels into his penis, <laughs> had an elephant fuck him, and then forced him to rape a cat until it was retarded. <laughs> and then she videotapes it, and she takes pictures of it, and I guess she uploads them onto, like, Vine? This is 2013, so, like, Vine and YouTube? Carefully neglected to point out the stark contrast between his violent sex with Lori and his tender committed love songs for Gail, who admitted to Brent that she had trained for Christian missionary service. Though he tried to suppress the horror, Lori shoved her evidence, the picture she took to the Paramount studio heads, down his throat, stabbing him to death with it. Gloating in her victory, her rape devastated a love that towered to the heavens. Wait, did she literally just kill him? Missionary service. Though he tried to suppress the horror, Lori shoved her evidence, the picture she took to the Paramount studio heads, down his throat, stabbing him to death with it. Gloating in her victory, her rape devastated a love that towered to the heavens. Man, this chick puts, like, Bill Cosby and the rest to shame. She, she had an elephant rape a dude, took videos and pictures of it, and then choked him to death on the photo evidence and stabbed him while he gagged. <laughs> she, this is, what did this guy do to her? Gail noticed his unusual silence that three weeks in September of 1992. September 15th was her birthday, and he didn't call her. Is something wrong, she wrote him. Have I offended you? Silence. Why won't you call me? What's wrong? Oh, something's terribly wrong. He never ignored her when she cried, but he was ignoring her. Oh, it's because I turned him down, and now I've lost him. Oh, Lord, how I must suffer for honoring your Bible and your laws. She cried so much, she couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, and stopped attending church. All her heart she had flowed into Brent, and the flow had been blocked. It jammed into a wall that seemed a million miles thick. All she had lived for the past year, dammed up in torrents inside her, so that her heart exploded with pain, and she cried all through the days and days that Brent gave her silence on her phones. To make matters worse, she knew Brent read of her despair in her letters to him, and his silence toward her continued, even when he knew she was groveling in depression because of his silence. Oh, something terrible's happened, something awful. Lord, I'm so depressed. My heart is bleeding all over the floor, and I can't stop the bleeding. I'm going to die if you don't help me. Though Gail denied Brent her body, she had given him all else, all her time, all her heart, and all her soul. Normally in church, Sunday mornings and evening and Wednesday night, she skipped church for a week, barely having the strength to get out of bed. Depression. I'm kind of like curious where this is going to go. Like, okay, so he's dead. So you're a co like, you're a crime scene investigator, a detective. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You work for the sex crime unit. And you get called out to a scene where dude's asshole looks like somebody opened it up to the size of a fire hydrant. And in his throat are photos of him getting fucked by an elephant. <laughs> Do you, like, what do you think that is? You must think that's like some cartel shit. Like, who who gets a guy fucked by an elephant and chokes him to death on the photos of it? That's like you're trying to send somebody a message. Some cop, some beat cop is going to walk across this. And it's just going to fuck him up for life. And overwhelmed her. Tears flowed like a waterfall. As she drove on the freeway, she cried so much, she could barely see the road. The love she wanted to flow to him was blocked. Her heart had hit a wall. A lady at her church named Leslie sensed her despair long distance through prayer and laid flat on the ground to pray for Gail. At that moment when Leslie prayed, Jesus gave Gail peace about Brent. Her depression lifted over his silence. Gail had surrendered her feelings for Brent to Jesus and decided she could love him through prayer. Now the dam of love she had for him was no longer blocked. It would flow to him through prayer. She decided to pray for Brent for the rest of her life. That decision made her feel she was still loving him and so her spirits lifted. After weeks of torment over his silence, she could sleep at night because she could now love him through prayer. Oh, well, you know, at least she's okay. Oh, you know, I, like, <laughs> she's sitting with a priest or something. Oh, I feel so much better, Father. You know, there's this dude I knew 
who got sodomized by an elephant and choked to death on the photos of it. But I feel better now because I prayed to Je- I prayed to Jesus. Jesus let me feel. Jesus didn't care about the dude getting butt fucked by an elephant, but he made sure Gail felt better. I mean, all's well that ends well. Holy shit! Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? We've got four parts left. I'm gonna actually save that for the start of Monday. I was gonna go through all of them, uh, but I, it's like you. There's a point where you hit so much crazy, you start to become desensitized to it. And I want it to be fresh. We've 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 already gone through a dude getting fucked by an elephant and fucking a cat. I don't know where it goes from here. He's dead. He's fucking dead. Like chat, press F. He's dead. He's gone forever. Fucked to death by an elephant. I is she gonna go after the black guy? Is she gonna fuck him to death too? Is Lori gonna go on a rampage of fucking men to death? Is that the whole child children's book? Children's audio book. I don't know. You're going to have to tune in Monday to find out for parts five through eight. Uh, also, over the weekend, I'm going to, I hope there's more. I'm going to start looking to see if I can find more of this. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I'll pace it where I've get like 20 minutes of this and 20 minutes, like a photon episode. You know, that I think that's a nice buffer for a show that, that might work. We could, we could watch the whole 18 chapters worth of Lori drugging and fucking people. Oh, Macaulay Culkin. Fuck, I forgot about that. Fucked a cat till it was retarded. Had eels shoved in his dick. Fist fucked. Dildo fucked. Uh, Macaulay Culkin shows up and gets drugged and almost raped. Raped to death by an elephant. Had the photos of the rape shoved down his throat as a warning to other people. That's Lori. That's our antagonist. That's how you write a villain. You know, George R.R. R. Martin should be taking notes down. The Red Wedding. It's amateur shit. This is hardcore parkour villainy. <laughs> this chick is demented on a lot of levels. Uh, let's see. We've got Lupum, phones. She said phones. I, I, I'm not, I missed that one. Uh, Brew98, I want to go back to making fun of Jews from Thorkill. Just woke up. You talked about Epstein anymore? Uh, yep, talked about him a little bit earlier on. Uh, from Man with Memes. I've yet to catch a stream. Oh, we read that one. Glad to catch one. Well, you tuned in for uh, for a unique one. Let me put it that way. And then finally from the FEO answer, after that book, uteral lining bacon doesn't sound so bad. Uh, very true. Uteral lining baking uh, does sound delicious at this point compared to elephant sodomy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll read over the Ed article too. i uh, give you some highlights on our author when we return Monday to watch the rest of uh, chapter one. Uh, and we'll follow it up with the Slazo stuff. I, I'll move that to Monday. And then you know, if we have time, which we probably will, uh, we'll watch a little bit of uh, Photon Episode 8. I think it's 8 or 9 that I left off on. I'm not 100% sure. Either way, enjoy your Friday. Uh, have a good time at work or school or wherever you're going. Yeah, I'm going to actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to play the <laughs> Weiji and a Keiji song. Because that's fantastic that Amazon wanted to do that to their fucking workers. How demented is that? Uh, have a great weekend. Hope it treats you well. Uh, a video coming out soon up on BitChute. And I will be back Monday with more of uh, more of this amazing masterpiece. Thank you again for sending that via Super Chat. Uh, that's a first. I haven't watched that before. I, I guess I completely missed it. Uh, have a good one, chat. And I will see you later on. <laughs>